and uh, welcome to Aquavit and to Omex for Foodies experience that is happening here in New York City exclusively for Macy's and Bloomingdale's most loyal customers. I want to say a big thank you for American Express, uh, to American Express for inviting us to be part of this experience with you guys. And I do hope that you are all ready to uh, bring out your best cooking skills and uh, join us tonight for this three course dinner. Omex for Foodies is a community creating for people that share the passion for gastronomy. And we here at Aquavit would love to thank American Express for inviting us to participate in this amazing event. All right, so to start off the night, I wanted to uh, welcome you all to Aquavit. And my name is Emma Bengtsson, and uh, I am the chef here at the restaurant. And my co-host <laughs> here tonight, Ayako, please let me know how to pronounce your last name. <laughs> Kaneyoshi. 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 <laughs> So exotic. <laughs> Coming from the Nordic countries is such a difference. It's amazing. So welcome you. Thank you for and, having um, me. I wanna, we're gonna go over the box tonight yes. and show all our viewers on how to uh, cook uh, a three course meal uh, at home with the uh, experience of uh, the Nordic flavors and mm -hmm. the Nordic cuisine that we do here at Akavi. Yes, before we start, Emma, why don't you introduce yourself a little to our viewers? Of course. Um, so my name is Emma Bengtsson. I am born and raised in Sweden, and uh, I moved to New York, wow, 11 years ago now. Wow. A long time, but uh, I started here in the restaurant as a pastry chef. Mm -hmm. And in 2014, I took over as executive chef and um, still holding on to my pastry chef <laughs> position though. So I'm wearing two hats in the kitchen, but uh, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to do, uh, to do both of it. Uh, Aquavita has been around for 37 years now. Uh, definitely an institution in, in New York and uh, a must go to for uh, all those uh, Nordic Swedish flavors. And I'm hoping that will come across in this uh, box when you guys start cooking. Yes. When you say Nordic flavors, what exactly do you mean? What do we expect? So I think when I think Nordic and uh, when I think Scandinavia as well. It's the purity mm -hmm. of the land and the oceans. Mm -hmm. We're lucky to have amazing oceans, oceans around us and the land is so uh, bountiful from the south to the north. Um, so you can almost find all the ingredients and in Nordic cuisine we're highlighting that with preserving, um, pickling, like taking care of all these flavors. It's a very short summer months. Mm -hmm. Uh, very long winters, mm -hmm. very cold. So uh, the techniques that we're using is to uh, take care of everything that the land gives us mm -hmm. and be able to eat uh, all year round. So it's um, a lot of pickling, smoking, brining, uh, curing, uh, fermenting, um, all of those uh, preservations. Mm -hmm. So um, beautiful. Yeah, it's it just to highlight right. the. the mm -hmm the beauty of the nature mm -hmm. in, in it. Yes, for anybody who's interested to experience the restaurant, we're here at Aqua Beat in Midtown, New York. All right, are you guys ready to um, open up the box? Yes, see. <clears throat> see. Let's start with um, peeling off our sticker here. And if you guys, um, have already unboxed your little box and put stuff in the fridge, uh, we can start taking them out of uh, the fridge as well. So opening up this beautiful box, we have uh, little QR codes here. So you can, uh, you already seen them there for to follow along, but you can also throughout the whole meal, uh, go on Instagram and show us what you guys are doing with um, hashtagging Omics for foodies. So don't forget to do that. I would love to see uh, how you guys are cooking all the food. Um, all right, so let's start unveiling everything. You have our little menu here with a uh, black bath dish that I did a couple of years ago. 
Um, let's open it up and you will see all the dishes here and um, everything is going to be um, a color coded. So the first course, the chilled pea soup will be with green labels. The main course, the duck comfy and squash will all have yellow labels and the dessert will have red labels. So it should be hopefully pretty straightforward. So let's put the menu here to the side. <clears throat> Ooh, look at that. We got some aprons. Nice. Thank you. You're welcome. Gotta have aprons on when you cook so you can stay nice and clean. Comfortable. Very nice. I like it. Blue. Blue is my favorite color. Mine too. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we have else in here. What do we got? Questions. questions. All right. So if you have any questions throughout, you can contact us. And I know throughout the show, uh, there will be availability to send in questions and ask um, mm -hmm. anything that you do not understand or just fun random things that you might think of and then what to prepare and <clears throat> excuse me what utensil that you will be needing for the night you also have the menu again so if you don't want to make this dirty while cooking you can use this guy as your reference uh, throughout the cooking process uh, very very smart okay let's dive in here so <clears throat> I think we're going to start from the beginning, which is our green color code. And that is the first course, which is a pea soup. Beautiful. So you have a little green sticker here. So we'll put that up here. You can lean it a little. And then the pea soup is coming with some smoked yogurt, mm. toasted almonds, and uh, then we're gonna garnish. Okay. I always have to have a little bit of garnish on. Mm -hmm. Some pea shoots. So we have that in little other sticker. So that is our first course. They're all color coded with green stickers. And then our main course is gonna be yellow stickers. So we have this little double packaged uh, squash situation. Mm -hmm. So we have um, marinated uh, squash uh, with uh, summer herbs and then at the top here we had to throw in a little bit of pickles so uh, we pickled some uh, patty pans as well uh, for you guys and then leave that there we have our duck comfy they uh, they look a little pale mm -hmm. but we're gonna sear them up right. so they get a nice brown color these guys have been brined for 12 hours and then they've been cooked for another 12 hours very slow cooked overnight so they are super super nice and tender that's our protein and then to finish it off some brown butter mm. emulsion with some swedish mustard in it got to throw a little bit of swedish ingredients in there uh, so that will be for our main and then one of my favorite desserts I always used to do this at home when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Anything I could find in the, uh, in the, I was gonna say yard, but in the garden, <laughs> in the back garden, I would turn into a crumble. Nice. Cause it was just, it's so delicious and it's just screams summer mm -hmm. for me. So I did a combination here where I uh, uh, took strawberries huh? and I took peaches, peaches. and um, so what I like to do when I make a crumble is I cook some of them and then I put some raw in there as well. So that later on when we cook the pie or the crumble, you have different uh, textures of it. Nice. So that's our little compote. And these guys are all color coded red. So strawberry red, think of that. We have our crumble mm. um, that we're gonna use. It's flavored with a little bit of lemon zest. Okay. Just to give it a, a little kick to it. Over there, and then, unfortunately, I would love to send you guys ice cream, but it's, <laughs> it's not that easy to ship. 
So I'm doing uh, the next best thing and I'm sending plenty of it. So um, I like to keep on adding mm -hmm. from Anglais uh, vanilla sauce uh, to my pie as I go along. It's, uh, it's so yummy. I can never get enough of it. So I'm sending you uh, a, big a big batch of it. So it will definitely last throughout the whole combo. Okay, great. All right, that was the box. So I guess we should all be preheating our ovens. Yes, yes, let's do that. So let's all make sure that the oven gets to uh, 350 uh, and uh, before we get started so that it's ready to go when we get to that point in the cooking. All right, so I'm gonna move these out of the way so we can uh, start cooking. Mm. All right, so let's start cooking. Okay. But as you remember, gotta wash your hands. So this is the moment. Mm -hmm. If you haven't already, please make sure you wash your hands and sing the happy birthday song. Right. Right? That's the one? 20 seconds. 20 <laughs> seconds. Um, okay, so I think we're gonna start from the back. Okay. Uh, because we all wanna eat at the end of this video, right? So, um, we're going to start with the crumble because it takes a little bit of time in the oven. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the easiest one. So we have our compote, color coded red. We have our crumble and our creme anglaise. What and exactly then, is creme anglaise? Ooh, good question. So creme anglaise is uh, a vanilla mm -hmm. a cream sauce. Mm. There's a couple of different ways you can make it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I like to make mine really creamy. Okay. So I have a, almost like 50-50 milk and cream. Mm, okay. But uh, a lot of times it's mostly uh, milk okay. uh, with egg yolk and sugar. Mm. But uh, I always feel like if you should indulge, do it properly. So mm. I, I have a little bit more cream in mine. Um, Wonderful. I love that. And then real vanilla, of course, a big, big yeah. thing. So let's put a couple of our stuff a little bit to the side for later and uh, get focused on this guy. So um, I'm going to open this bag. And if you can pass me the little ramekin. So we're going to take out our compote and uh, fill Whatever ramekin we have at home. Um, I only have these little guys here, so um, it will be enough for two of them. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you have a larger one, you can uh, you can definitely do that. This is also something I don't want to be skimpy on, so if you want to make a big one for you, go for it. So we're gonna fill it up. And then I'm gonna put a little bit of the liquid in the bottom. Uh, so don't be afraid to use that. That's going to soak up and, and moist up uh, the pie so it doesn't get uh, dry. And then we can save the rest for our second pie later. Mm -hmm. Crumble. Yeah, okay. So I make my crumble uh, pretty uh, simple. My grandma told me this recipe. So uh, it's um, raw sugar, flour, butter, mm -hmm and lemon zest. I always feel like the lemon zest give it a little bit yes. of a, a freshness to it. And then I add salt. Don't forget the salt. Mm -hmm. uh, every dessert I always make, I add salt to it. So I think I'm gonna put this on a tray so okay. I don't make a mess because I have a tendency of adding a lot of crumble <laughs> because I also love crumble. I feel like when you make a cobbler, you just gotta go for it, right? Yes. Mm. And I like when they uh, has like these little boulders yes. in them because that gives it even more um, texture. Yes. All right. So we're going to fill that whole thing. Okay. We'll take a little towel and then we're going to uh, place this in the oven that hopefully by now have reached 350 Fahrenheit. It takes around 15 minutes. Okay. But what I've learned from 
like this year, previous year, is that every oven is a little bit yes. different. So I started true. baking and cooking at home and realizing that 20 minutes in the restaurant oven is 40 in my oven. Mm -hmm. So true. <laughs> so well, I'll show you what to look for when we take it out Great. so that you are aware, but it should be around 15 to 20 minutes. Okay. It would take. Not too long. All right. Let's pop him in the oven. See you later. Okay. And then so that we are well and prepared, I'm going to pour up the sauce too okay. so we don't forget about it. Make a little hole. A lot. Okay, a all of it. <laughs> yes. And this should be put in the fridge or it should be room temperature. So it can be enjoyed in, in both okay. ways. I love to put this in the fridge. Uh, until it's time to eat it because I really love the contrast between uh, the hot crumble mm -hmm. and the cold sauce. Right. So I have a little fridge underneath me here so I'm gonna put pop him in the fridge and then we will take him out later when it's time to mm -hmm. eat it. All right so moving on to the main Thank course. It. Yes. Uh, the crumble is working its magic by itself so we're gonna move into the sky. We have our squash. Mm -hmm. uh, what we do here is that we mar we grill it first on our charcoal grill, and then we let it sit mm -hmm. in um, like a herbal okay. uh, pesto almost. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no nuts in it though. I'm just using the word for reference. Uh, so it really soaks up all those um, herb flavors, right. freshness. And then we have our duck confit. Um, and last but not least, our brown butter emulsion. Yes. So let's uh, open up our duck confit. Just for the viewers to know, if we're going too fast, you're always encouraged to stop the video and restart. Um, as much as you need time to prepare, don't be afraid to stop the video. We're here. Good advice. Good advice. Love it. All right. So we have our dark confit, and then at the same time, I'm gonna take out the uh, bottom bag. Okay. So these are two individual uh, package. So if you open up the bottom one, you can leave the top one closed for now, and he will stay like that until it's time to okay. uh, to uh, plate it. Because these don't need to be cooked. No, they they uh, they are delicious the way they are raw and pickled. So these guys, and then just spread them out on the tray, and have them ready. So we we'll leave these here for now, and then we're gonna go over to the stove, and uh, we're gonna sear up uh, mm -hmm. the okay. duck confit. Keep in mind these are completely fully cooked. The reason we're searing them is because we want that uh, crispy skin mm -hmm. and obviously to get them uh, warm. Uh, if you are um, only searing up one, you can also use the other one cold in a salad mm -hmm. or something. Okay. It's, it's a, a perfect uh, way to cook something mm -hmm. and then eat it cold as well. Yes. Okay, so let's move over onto the stove. Professional kitchens. All right, so we have our pan. Mm -hmm. We're gonna have some oil. <clears throat> Excuse me, and uh, the duck confit. Okay. We want to heat up the pan so it's. Um, uh, really nice and hot. Okay. So we never really want to put uh, anything into a cold pan. Okay. So we're gonna do that, and then what kind of oil do you use? So I use uh, very plain canola mm -hmm. oil. Um, I would normally refrain from using olive oil okay. in anything that I'm heating up because it's 
one of those oils that is better cold. Mm. So be careful with that. So just a normal plain oil. And then we add these guys. And be, make sure to put the skin side down. Yeah, skin side down. <clears throat> they may pop a little, so just uh, okay. be careful okay. and stay away. So it's medium to high heat? Medium to high heat, but in a very hot pan. Okay, sorry. Ooh. Yeah, be careful. So just be careful because it's like almost like bacon. Mm -hmm. There's so much fat in it, so it can uh, pop a little bit. So uh, um, stay a little stay bit away, away. on the <laughs> side. Wow, already has a nice color. And you can, um, what I like to do is almost like sift them up on the side. Mm -hmm. So you make sure that you get um, a perfect thing to do here is uh, if you have a, a glove, mm -hmm. a little oven glove, so you're not uh, injuring yourself. Okay, safety reasons. <laughs> safety reasons. I'm used to it, so. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we'll turn it off. The main reason is just to get a nice little crisp to them. Wow, that was fast. We'll put them back on the tray. And then we are gonna pop these in the oven too. Okay. Um, I would roughly say around 15 minutes as well mm -hmm. because they, um, they're all already fully cooked, so okay. it should be fine. We'll put them in there. Again at 350. 350, same degrees. Okay. And um, we, after five minutes, mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna pop these guys in. Okay. So that they get um, some heat as well. Okay. I would say these need around eight minutes. Okay, and these are again so, cooked. So just These are already cooked as well. We only need to heat them up, so that's why uh, around, I would say, eight minutes would be more than enough time. Great. All right, so it's about time to put these in, right. and it should be time to take the crumble out. All right. <laughs> so we'll pop these in, and uh, we'll take a look at the crumble. Okay. I love how we're so time efficient. Right? Oh, wow. So this is what makes uh, cooking easier to plan out mm -hmm. and do things. It's not always first course first, main okay. dessert. So that's why we're doing the opposite direction. So just in case, I don't want to make my table warm. We'll put on this guy. So what we're looking for here is a nice color. Yes. And then I just love, I mean, you can wipe it off if you want, but I just love when it bubbles over mm -hmm. and you see all that juice coming out of it that's that's sign. what we're looking for <laughs> okay that's a that's a good sign uh, that it have all that juiciness mm -hmm. to it so <clears throat> um, obviously it's gonna be really really hot yes which uh, is why we're gonna put this to the side okay and uh, start uh, preparing the first course okay so we'll move this to the side for a little bit. Okay, first course, green labels. This is our pea soup. Mm -hmm. We have our pea shoots. Okay. And our toasted almonds mm -hmm. and smoked yogurt. Okay. Wow. Gotta have something that's smoked in there. It's uh, a signature for us as well. Yes. So uh, we thought, why not smoke the yogurt for this course? Uh, so do you mind passing me the bowl? So the soup is coming prepared. Okay. And it's served chilled. And it's served chilled. And the good thing with these bags is if you just cut a small little mm -hmm. corner, you can clam shell it uh, close right. and, and keep it. Um, and it's also easier to pour without yes. spilling all over. 
So we're gonna cut a little hole. What kind of cave are you for this? So there's always this talk about fresh peas and, and trust me, I love fresh peas in, more than anything in the world. But for this soup, frozen peas frozen. are actually the best. They have the most flavor mm. and they've been frozen at the peak of their time as well. So we've been using um, flash frozen peas. And they have beautiful color. Oh, they do. They're very, very nice. So we'll have our soup and then we can save the rest for later. Then we're gonna have our yogurt. So we use, um, I love to use local products. So this is a yogurt coming from upstate New York. Oh, nice. uh, has a very nice acidic flavor to it. And it's also a little bit looser. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're gonna add this. And then you can obviously add the rest while you're eating it. But for the the picture presentation, presentation. <laughs> we'll keep it a little bit less. Very important. Very important. You eat as much with your eyes, right? And then we have these pea shoots. I love to um, coordinate garnishes with the ingredients. So now during the summer, the pea shoots are just Fabulous. We'll add some of these. I'm getting hungry now. <laughs> Beautiful. And some almonds. Um, these are just toasted almonds mm -hmm. that we have chopped up a little bit. Mm -hmm. If you have an allergy, you can definitely leave these out. So there, there's nowhere in the soup or in anything else. So. You don't have to worry about it. And the reason why I do this is because I always believe that every dish should have um, contrast mm -hmm. and uh, different consistencies. Mm -hmm. So you get the smoothiness, the creaminess from the soup, mm -hmm. but you still want to kind of have something to bite down on. Mm -hmm. So that's where the pea shoots and the almonds comes in. Mm -hmm. So you get that uh, texture right. while eating it and it provides uh, a different uh, experience. So wow. this is our first course. This is our pea soup with smoked yogurt, uh, pea shoots and uh, toasted That's almonds. Beautiful. And uh, this uh, is ready to go. So we're gonna put this to the side and save that for um, for later and we're gonna prepare the uh, finish off the main course yes. so that one is ready all right let's go and have a look in the oven so wow. everything is I was gonna say puttering but puttering isn't the wrong word <laughs> and my my Swedish coming through um, simmering, it's simmering. It's, everything simmering. is simmering <laughs> Sizzling, sizzling, sizzling. That's sizzling. what we're looking for. <laughs> All right, so we'll take out our cutting board. And um, yes. pass me the main, the plate. So I think what I want to do is I'm going to keep these nice and whole. These are our uh, zucchini and squash. Oish. I have a little towel. We have our patty pans. I think I want to cut these a little. I am using a knife here, mm -hmm. but Feel free to use a spatula as well. I think I had one over here. We're gonna do it properly. 
Any tips on plating? I think you always have to vision it as like it it needs to uh, look appealing mm -hmm. and I, I love to do different uh, sizes mm -hmm. that's why I was cutting a couple yeah. of them I'll leave one hole and um, you want to have a little bit of height right okay uh, as well so Like you're using your hands, but obviously it's hot. <laughs> yes, so uh, please use uh, tongs or um, uh, gloves. gloves. Works too. Um, I am so used to the heat that I don't really feel it that much anymore. Okay. Um, yes, I'm sorry for that. But um, it is it is very hot, but. It's uh, you get numb after <laughs> 20 years of cooking. It's uh, it doesn't bother me that much. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna open our uh, little pickles, pickled, right? um, patty pans, patty pans. So they do have a little bit of liquid in them. So just be careful uh, so it doesn't fall out. And I do, to continue on that question, I do like to use my hands a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, I know there's the whole thing with tweezers and, and that comes to time with mm -hmm. that too. But um, if you, um, since I'm going to be eating this myself later on, I totally everybody's fine. cooking at home. So. You wash your hands, mm -hmm. it should be fine. I love how you're folding them. I it's you know it's it's one of those things where you really have to like think about what looks pretty mm -hmm. and um, anything that slides really thin if you fold them up a little bit they almost look like little flowers um, and here the texture comes in here as well so you have a little bit more of a bite mm -hmm. to the grilled uh, squash these guys are a little bit tender but you have like an acidity right. to it and uh, a more of a sweetness to the grilled ones and then the duck confit is it's buttery mm -hmm. creamy um, salty so you get uh, you get all of those different flavors coming through amazing so i think i think that looks good for me and i always i always play it like i'm sitting at the table right. So then you turn it around and that is how it looks. The sauce. And the sauce. <laughs> oh my God. Can't believe I forgot it. <laughs> it's good to have that. That's why you have sous chefs, right? So this sauce needs to be heated too or no? No. So okay. this is the beauty of this is that it's an emulsion. Mm -hmm. So think almost like a, a mayonnaise okay. or Holland and yeah. Um, I mean, this is the closest thing. I take a spoon. The only thing I don't want to do here, I don't want to put put it on the the duck. Okay. Because you work to get a crispy Rest, skin, yes. so we want to keep this a little bit on the side. So we'll move him a little. We'll add a spoonful in the front. A little in the back, maybe a little bit here. Spread it out. And I, I just love cold sauces as well. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like everything, specifically in the summer when right. you're grilling, to have, you don't want to mm -hmm. overdo it and cook all day mm -hmm. long. So having something cold that's already prepared uh, it's, it's it's also a contrast, I guess. Again. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely, definitely. So, duck confit with uh, grilled summer mm -hmm. squash, brown butter emulsion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, not easy. That's why we have have all of this color coded for you guys. Uh, so that is our main course, and uh, hopefully by now our pie has cooled down a little. Right. So our 
third course is our crumble with the crumb with the crumb anglais beautiful three course meal still a little hot <laughs> yeah that was this, very this is this is it beautiful and it should it should be easy but any questions you have uh, anything you're wondering uh, please don't hesitate and ask. I've done this a million times, so something easy for me isn't always uh, easy. What kind of beverages would you recommend pairing with this kind of meal? So I'm thinking, um, in my preference, I would go with a either a prosecco mm -hmm, nice. or if you want to go to a champagne. But uh, I, I love. Prosecco. There's mm -hmm. so many nice ones, and having that bright pop. Yes. Um, so nice. You can almost think about like um, a creme de nom, mm -hmm. where you have champagne in it. Mm -hmm. So this is just a cold, Beautiful. cold version. So I would pair that with uh, a glass of bubbly mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, my favorites uh, with uh, the duck confit. I know it's meat. But uh, it's summer, okay. and uh, I think a nice uh, bottle of rosé nice. uh, will work really well with the grilled vegetables. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to go with a traditional red, not always. No, I, th I think think outside the box. But I also, since there's a little bit of a Swedish person mm -hmm. in me, um, a nice beer. Oh, right, of course. <laughs> you know, a, a big cold beer mm -hmm. um, would work really well as yeah. well. Uh, maybe an IPA where you get a little bit of a, a, a hoppiness mm -hmm, to it mm -hmm. will work really well with the squash. That sounds amazing too. And uh, with our crumble, ooh, are we gonna pair with that one? <laughs> See, the thing when desserts is that sometimes it always gets paired with um, sweet sweet wine, sweet wine yeah. desserts, mm -hmm. wine, and things like that, and. Um, I don't want any beverage person to be mad at me here, but <laughs> I would always pair that with a nice ice cold aquavit. That's beautiful. So, oh, that's such a yeah. great to me. If you have an aquavit in the freezer and you pop it out and you have our the warm crumble, cold creme anglais, and then a nice um, cold aquavit that uh, breaks mm -hmm. that sweetness. Mm -hmm. And, and make it pop. That's Beautiful. that's what I uh, that's what I would do. Sounds amazing. And again, plating. There's no rule. Everybody can do their own. Everyone can do their own. If you don't feel like plating this way, get creative. Uh, see me. Uh, let me see what you are up to. And um, I would love to see how you guys plate it. Uh, anything you're up to, uh, sh show it off. And use your own skills. Sorry, one more question about the aqua vie you mentioned for the dessert pairing. Many of us may not be familiar with aqua vie. Can you explain? Doesn't what everyone about? know what aqua vie is? <laughs> and what kind of aqua vie? Like, how do we pick one? Um, so, aqua vie is uh, in, in Latin translated to water of life. Wow, that's beautiful. Um, but it is infused mm -hmm. uh, vodka. Mm -hmm. And um, Nowadays, it, it is done in so many different flavor profiles. There's so much you can do. Here we have ooh, probably 30, 40 different flavors, mm -hmm. like everything from strawberry aquavit to uh, honest to uh, caraway. Mm -hmm. um, ramp as well. Yes. We do uh, any kind of aquavits mm -hmm. here. But um, to pair with this one, I would go with uh, probably a traditional one mm -hmm. uh, or even our own which is white cranberry mm -hmm. so um, if you see them out there you can definitely find a, a traditional one that mm -hmm. is flavored with uh, uh, honest and caraway yes. uh, fennel mm -hmm. uh, some of them are called scone okay. or um, op anderson okay. it's, it's someone that's really uh, accessible in us as well but um, yeah, you can't go wrong with any of them. Right, so if anybody's interested to explore more types of aqua beads, there's a bar room in this restaurant where you can try different kinds of aqua beads. So we hope you come. Well, thank you. Yes, definitely.
So yeah, this is our three course meal. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed cooking along and that it wasn't too stressful and that we made it uh, easy enough for you guys to, um, to make it happen. Um, thank you. And uh, don't forget to um, show me all your pictures and uh, using the hashtag Amex for foodies. Uh, Amex for foodies. Uh, my Swedish keep coming <laughs> in there with a the translate. But uh, show, show me everything you have. I'm so excited to see uh, how you guys have uh, been doing tonight. Yes, after this video, a QR code will show up. Um, we hope you will um, send us your survey and let us know what you thought about this. Thank How you. How amazing we were doing oh, tonight, yes. right? <laughs> All the good things. <laughs> well, thank you so much for tuning in tonight and for uh, joining us in this experience. And uh, thank you, American Express, for inviting us mm -hmm. to, uh, to be part of it. And uh, have a lovely weekend. Yes, enjoy your weekend. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye. You. Bye.